This is Evangelist Henry Walker. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. Maybe you're listening on my website at henrywalker.org under audio messages, or maybe you're listening at podpoint.com backslash Henry Walker, or maybe you're listening on my YouTube channel, New Life Revival International Henry Walker. I want to start a new message today talking about how the Father can bring a person who's considered a nobody into somebody for him. How the Father can promote a person on a new level to be very prominent in this end times for him. But let's go to Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want, Father. Let me say only what you want me to say. Nothing more and nothing less. Help people, Father, to open up their spirits and not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Again, talking about how the Father can bring a person who's considered a nobody into somebody for him. A person he can use to the fullest. And we want to be that person. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 26, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. These are people who are considered to be a nobody. But the Father had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And the Father had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Again, a nobody. And the base things of the world and things which are despised had the Father chosen, yet things which are not to bring to north things that are, that no flesh should have praise and honor in his presence. Again, I want to be that person, hopefully you want to be that person, who the Father can bring out of obscurity into a prominent place where he uses us and he gets all the praise and the honor and so many people go through the door to a rapture to eternal life with him as a result of how he uses us. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 again, using the word to see how the Father used people who were considered to be a nobody and made them into a somebody for him. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. So Titus was sent on a missionary trip and there's a person that came with him. We don't even know his name, but he's called the brother. In verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 18. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is throughout all the congregations. This one person. Again, his name's not even mentioned. In verse 22. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. So here's a person whose name is not even mentioned. Titus's name is mentioned. But here's a brother who had praised throughout all the congregations. See, the father just brought him to the front. Probably the type of person didn't want any praise and honor. That's why his name is not even mentioned. But he was brought to the front, and all the congregations were praising how the Father used them. Again, going from a nobody to a somebody. Go to the book of Judges with me. Go to the left of the book of Judges. Right at the Joshua, before Ruth. Joshua, Judges. Every time the Israelites would serve Yahweh, their enemies could not approach them. And if they did, they were destroyed by Yahweh. But every time they would turn their backs on Yahweh, the enemy would succeed against them. Here, the children of Israel walked away from Yahweh. In verse 8, Therefore the anger of Yahweh was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cush Shen Rishta, the king of Mesopotamia, and the children of Israel served, we'll just call him Cush, eight years. So eight is another new beginning, and it's time for a new beginning. But And when the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh, in verse 9, Yahweh raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. Here's somebody who was a nobody. The only praise he had, that he was Caleb's younger brother. 
But the father raised him up to be a deliverer out of nowhere. And the spirit of Yahweh in verse 10 came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war, and Yahweh delivered Cush, the king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cush. And the land had rest for 40 years. And Othiel, he died. But see how he came out of nowhere. As a result of him leading the children of Israel, their army, they had rest for 40 years. So many people in the world want a prominent position. But promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south. It comes from Yahweh, the north. He puts down one and raises up another. And usually the people aren't looking for a prominent position that he puts there. Because they'll never forget who put him there. I never will forget where he took me from. And the same with you. But so many people in the world think that, that they can run their own lives. But the only way anybody was conceived is because the father, who's the agent of the conception, had a hand in it. Every podcast I pray for the babies in the womb. This ministry believes that life begins at conception. Around 18 days, the baby in the womb, their heart begins to beat. And around four months, their heart is pumping about 25 quarts of blood per day. And some people in the world don't realize that if it wasn't for the father, they wouldn't have been conceived. And most scientists believe that life begins at conception. The College of Pediatrics believes that life begins at conception. I want to pray for the babies in the womb right now. Father, touch the babies in the womb. I ask you to bring them to a full birth, Father. And we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. And if any of you out there had an abortion, repent, ask the Father to give you, and go on and follow him. But getting back to the book of Judges, Again, talking about how the father could bring a person who's a nobody into a somebody for him. A person who he can promote into a prominent position. In Judges chapter 4, I want to talk about Deborah. In verse 1, And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of Yahweh when Ehud was dead. And Yahweh sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazar, the captain whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harashah of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh, for he had 900 chariots of iron. In 20 years he mildly oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she heard the voice of Yahweh, and verse 6, and she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinom of Kadesh Napoli, and said unto him, Hath not Yahweh Elohim of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Napoli and of the, the children of Zebulon, and I will draw unto you to the river Kishon Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his ca- chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into your hand. So the father used Deborah, To say, Barak, go into the battle with your men. I'm going to draw the enemy to you, and I'll deliver him into your hand. And Barak said in verse 8, If you go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, then I will not go. So she was a prophetess, but now she's being brought into a more prominent place, the leader of the army. The person who was the leader of the army, Barak, would not go into the battle without her. And she said in verse 9, I will surely go with you, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for your honor. For Yahweh shall sell Caesar into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So he went and Deborah went with 10,000 men. In verse 15, And Yahweh discomforted Caesar and all his chariots and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak. So Caesar lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. And Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heba, the Kenite. For there's peace between Jabin, the king Hazar, and the house of Eba, the Kenite. And when he came, she said to him, Come, go into my tent, hide. And he wanted a little water, and she gave him a bottle of milk. And while he slept, she drove a nail right through his head. And he was dead. 
And so just like Deborah said, J.L. got all the, the credit for the victory. Look how the father brought J.L. from being a nobody in some people's eyes to a somebody for him, to a prominent position where she herself killed the leader of the enemy's army, Cesera. So again, talking about the father can bring somebody seemingly out of nowhere into a prominent position for him in his army. In his end times, as he uses somebody, people, to, to win souls for him. In chapter 5, Deborah gave such praise and honor to the troops in verse 15. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben there were great thoughts of heart. So she gave praise to the troops that were used by the Father to win the victory. So it's important that we see how the Father wants to bring us into a new level, into a promotion, all for Him, where He gets all the praise and the honor, how He uses us. In Judges chapter 6, you can see Gideon, a person who was hiding from the enemy, the Midianites. He was threshing wheat where the grapes were pressed. It was not the time for the grapes to be pressed, but he was hiding out there. And Yahweh appeared to him in verse 12 and said, Yahweh is with you, your mighty man of valor. And Gideon saying, how could I be that one? Verse 14, and Yahweh looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Had not I sent you? They started saying how my family is poor. Verse 16, and Yahweh said to him, Surely I will be with you. You shall smite the Midianites as one man. Gideon, I'm going to bring you to a prominent position. I'm going to use you to deliver your people from the Midianites. Just follow me. And Gideon had 32,000 men. And the father said, anybody who wants to go home, who's afraid, tell them to go. 22,000 left. Even after Gideon told them that Yahweh was with him, he preached a great sermon. But 22,000 people left. It was left with 10,000. Then the father said, I want you to go down to the springs. And every person who laps the water like a dog has the weapons in their hand. Those are the ones I want to use. And he was left with 300 men. Then he said, Gideon, I want you to go down. I want you to hear what the enemy has to say about you. And he overheard one of the enemy saying, I had a dream last night that a cake of barley came down and destroyed the tents of the Midianites. It was nothing but the sword of Yahweh, even the sword of Gideon. So that fear went throughout the camp. And Gideon told his people, said, I know we got the victory now. I'm going to separate you into three companies of 100 soldiers. And when I blow the trumpet and I smash the pitcher of light, I want you to do the same thing. And I want you to shout, the sword of Yahweh, even the sword of Gideon. And that triggered a fear that went throughout the whole camp. It was dark, it was night, and the enemy killed each other. So there's a fear transfer. It doesn't matter who's coming against you. The Father wants to transfer the fear that they're trying to put on you back to them. All I have to do is stand still and see your salvation. Stand still and see how the Father wins for you. Stand still and see how he prepares a table for you right in the midst of your enemies and shows up and shows off for you and shows what he can do with one person who he wants to promote, who's totally sold out to him. And, and more and more people need to really study the word and find out that things that they have accepted into their lives because of tradition from Constantine that are not even found in the Word. Holidays and so much junk that Constantine brought in. Please, please ask the Father to reveal what that junk is and let him get it out of your life. And you trace back every one of those holidays that have pagan roots. Nowhere in the Word are they even mentioned. Yeshua was born on Passover, died on Passover. Exactly 33 years. I have a message on my website, a written message. When was Yeshua born? When did he die? When did he rise? Everything major that he did, he did on a feast day. And so many major things in the Word that happened were done on feast days. I have a book on my website, the bottom of the message page called Noon. Talks about the feast days. It really helped you. Talks about the different hours of the day. 
when the Father moves the most? There's one hour today when His healing anointing is greater than any other hour. And also another book on the bottom of my message page is the Trinity really a mystery, explaining the so-called mystery of the Trinity. They're both free. It's important. But this ministry, we go back to our Jewish roots in Yeshua. Only in Yeshua. He teaches us what he taught the apostles and what the apostles taught others. We don't go back to the ceremonial washings and, and a, a 600 and some laws that the Jewish people had. No, we go back right to what Yeshua wants us to learn. And so if we're going to follow Yeshua, who is a Jew, was a Jew, always will be a Jew, we need to walk in his feast days. And that's where the, the Sabbath is so important. The Sabbath is a beautiful time of rest from Friday 6 p.m. to Saturday 6 p.m. He'll, he'll draw us into his presence during that time, at a certain period of time. And it's a beautiful preview of heaven. It just refreshes us at the end of the week and gives us a brand new beginning, more power at the start of the new week, starting at Saturday at 6 p.m. Remember, the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. Evening and morning were the first day in the book of Genesis. And you should have talked about the 12 hours of the day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And 12 hours of the night, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. It's important to get on this timing. There's messages on there, when is the new year? That's on there. It's not January 1st, set up by the Romans paganism. 1201 is not the start of the day. Nowhere in the Word does it say that. It's important that we all get on his timing if we're not there. Nissan 1 is the beginning of the year. It's around March, April. It's so beautiful. It's the beginning where things are growing. There's like new life, a new beginning. And again, Yeshua was born on Passover, died on Passover. So that's exactly what happened. They blew the trumpets, the three groups, smashed the pitches of life, and again, and the enemy killed each other. One person allowed the father, Gideon did, to bring him to a place of prominence for the father. Gideon doesn't get any praise and honor, but the father does for what he can do through one person who's totally submitted to him. And Gideon didn't want any praise and honor. He was scared to begin with in the very beginning, but the father strengthened him and brought him closer to him, and he followed the father into the enemy's camp, which was annihilated. Remember, the Father is an enemy to our enemies. Vengeance is his. Let him fight. Now go meet in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 9. There's a man named Ananias. In verse 10, Acts chapter 9, verse 10, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said Yeshua in a vision. Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Yeshua. He was ready to be used by the Father in anything he asked him to do. If the Father said, Ananias, I want you to jump, Ananias probably would have said, how high? Totally obedient to the Father, and the Father is ready to bring him into a prominent position for him. Remember on the last podcast, I talked to you about five steps for the Father to bring you into a place of prominence. Number one, as I mentioned before, to be totally submitted to him, surrendering everything to him, especially our flesh, and let him come into our spirit, let him modify the deeds of our flesh, and make us more like Yeshua, bringing the fruit of the spirit out of our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And the second step is to have that courage as the apostles had that coverage. They were told not to preach or teach in the name of Yeshua anymore. we got to obey the Father right in you. And that willingness, they were willing to serve the Father. Paul had a vision of somebody in Macedonia telling him, come on over here and help us. And he left immediately to help that person. And Peter and John wanted more signs and wonders to be done in their hands. And sure enough, they were willing to be used by the Father in a greater way, that the very least of the miracles was that anybody that came under the shadow of Peter was healed. And number four, they were teachable, like the congregation at Berea. They searched the word daily. And number five, they had a deep sense of purpose. Paul said in Acts chapter 20, verse 22, I'll just read it to you, stay where you are. He said, now 
Behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Say that the Spirit of the Father witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I received of Yeshua to testify the word of grace from the Father. He was told by Ananias, as we'll get to later on, the Father wanted to show Paul to Ananias the things he must suffer for his namesake. So here's Ananias being called upon Yeshua to lay hands on Paul. Verse 15, But Yeshua said unto him, Ananias was afraid, Go your way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. See, many are called, but few are chosen. We in the remnant have been chosen by the Father, and we have gone through things for his namesake. And it might be more in the future, but we know where he brought us from. We want to follow him. And we want him to bring us into a position where it could be more useful for him to win more and more people to him. Verse 16, For I'll show him how great things he must suffer for my namesake, as I mentioned. So these are people that the Father used who seemed to be nobody and made them into somebody for him. So go to chapter 8 with me in the book of Acts. I want to talk about Philip. Philip was one of the seven that were chosen to wait on the widow ladies at their table, to minister to them. Philip was one of the seven that was chosen to wait on the tables for the widows. And so he really came out of nowhere. In verse 5, chapter 8, there's nothing wrong with waiting on tables, but he did what the Father wanted him to do in waiting on those tables. I'm sure signs and wonders were done by Philip and Stephen and the others in the group. But the Father used that as a stepping stone, as a springboard into a prominent position in Samaria. Saul was making havoc for the congregations and entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. In chapter 8, Acts, verse 4, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Yeshua unto them. Didn't preach any congregation, just preach Yeshua. There's nothing wrong with preaching a congregation as long as the congregation is not tied into Constantine and his junk that he started. In verse 6, And the people of one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Signs and wonders followed. Signs and wonders followed the word, not the person. Signs and wonders followed the word. And he preached the word unto them. Yeshua, who is the word, manifested in the flesh. In verse 8, there was great joy in that city. And Peter and John were sent down to lay hands on them to receive the filling of the Spirit of the Father. And right in the middle of the revival, in verse 26, Yahweh spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that go down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. In the middle of a revival, he sends them out of revival into the desert. But he was totally sold out to the Father. That's why, it's one of the reasons why he was chosen, chosen to wait on the tables for the widows. Because he's faithful. So many people want to be pastors, but they don't want to clean the building first. They just want to go right into a pastorship. People have to demonstrate to the Father that they'll do anything he says. Not be right on the top without starting lower. Starting where you consider a nobody until he can make you into a somebody for him. In verse 27, And he rose and went, and behold, the man in Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. He was there for Pentecost at feast day. In verse 29, then, the spirit of the father said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand what you read? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And he explained the scripture in Isaiah to him. In verse 35, And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Yeshua. 
And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and a eunuch said, See, here is water. What does it hinder me to be baptized? Right in the desert. Yahweh had it there. Just for them, maybe. Verse 37, And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Yeshua is the Son of the Father, the Messiah. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they would come up out of the water, the spirit of Yahweh caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Uh, the father used him to help this eunuch of Ethiopia. He had great authority under the queen Candace, and so many congregations were established because of this one person who was very prominent with the queen, but now he was prominent with the father, Yahweh. But he had to be obedient and go towards this one person. So many people want to preach to thousands and thousands of people. But what about Yeshua? Preaching to the lady at the well in Samaria. One on one. And as a result of what he said to her, she went to all the men, and all the men came out to hear for themselves. So again, we're talking about allowing the Father to bring us into a prominent position for him, not for ourselves, but for him. Where more and more people see Yeshua operating through us. There's something I mention on every podcast also, is that if the flesh is giving you any worried thoughts, impure thoughts, fearful thoughts, anxious thoughts, just say out loud, Yeshua, the crown of thorns around your head was for me. That means my mind is protected by your blood. I only think your thoughts and give those thoughts to the Father. So also I want to mention to you, we have a ministry of feeding the poor in Nassau, the Bahamas. If the Father speaks to your spirit about helping us, every gift is tax deductible. We're a 501c3 organization, New Life Revival International Incorporated. You can donate to the ministry by going to my website at henrywalker.org and click on the donate button, or you can go to podpoint.com backslash Henry Walker and click on the donate button. I know the people will be blessed and you will be blessed. It's so great following the footsteps of Yeshua, but he put the loaves and the fishes in his hand and he multiplied the loaves and the fishes. And we feed those people out there. It's like putting that food into Yeshua's hands and he's multiplying that food for the people. If any of you have any praise reports, or any questions, and you want to email me, you can email me at contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at henrywalker.org, and I'll be so glad to hear from you. And if you enjoy these podcasts, tell other people about these podcasts, share, subscribe, hit the like button, and remember, till next time, this is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, greater is the father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than anything or anybody in the world.